Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Reverend Christina Thompson, pastor here at Whitney United Methodist Church, and I'm so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. We come together in spirit to worship Jesus the Christ, who asks us, who do you say that I am? And this will be our theme woven throughout the scripture this morning. As we begin worship this morning, I invite you to light a candle as a reminder that Christ is our light that is with us all, and that light binds us together as community, even as we are apart. Hear these words calling us to worship this morning. Good morning. I'm Tom Old, and I'd like to lead us in the call to worship. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the bread breaker, the light gatherer, cross carrier, welcome. May the peace of the Lord Jesus, the peacemaker and the seed scatterer, the yoke trainer and the abundant life giver be with us all. Let us draw close to the Lord Jesus, the savior, the healer, the teacher and worship him and ask ourselves, who do we say he is? I invite you to join as we sing Jesus, the very thought of thee. our opening prayer. Oh God, we gather for worship this morning, wrestling with the question Jesus asks us, who do you say that I am? Oh God, we acknowledge that sometimes we are confident in who we understand Jesus to be, but other times we are not sure who Jesus is at all. As we worship this morning, Help us to be honest with you and ourselves about what we believe about Jesus and how we live that out in the world. And may the very thought of Jesus offer us hope as we worship this morning. Today's scripture is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked, his disciples, who do the people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, 
Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whoever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And he sternly ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Welcome to our children's moment. I'm Kimberly. Well, we are all back in school. Yay! In our homes. Hmm. So I bet many of us have had to get a little creative in our homes to make a school or a workspace. Maybe you're in a corner of your living room, maybe in the dining room. And some of this is kind of cool. Maybe you get some new school supplies, you get to reorganize a part of the house, make it a little bit more yours. Uh, my daughter helped me with that. She made me some origami, um, some butterflies like this. And I taped them up on my wall back there. So my office definitely looks a lot prettier than it did before. And she also made this really neat little peacock. I don't know if it's technically origami because it uses more than one piece of paper, but it's also a very beautiful little piece of work. So some of it's kind of cool but I would imagine that it's hard too, right? It's kind of disappointing because we wanted to see our friends. We wanted to play outside at recess, meet our new teachers. And one of the reasons it's so exciting to be around our friends and our teachers at school is because when we're around other people, we change, we grow. That's because people have an effect on us and we have an effect on other people. We have relationships. Like what you have with your like you have with your parents or your siblings or even your pets we get to know people and one of the challenges right now is that we have to build those relationships we have to get to know new people online over a screen and that's hard right it's hard to have a relationship with someone who isn't physically with you how many of you have heard your parents or your pastor say something like you will be transformed by knowing jesus I hear this a lot, but what does it mean to know Jesus? How can you know someone who isn't standing right there next to you? If having a relationship with others is hard over Zoom and Google Classroom, how do you have a relationship with someone who lived so long ago in a land far, far away with a totally different culture who didn't even speak the same language as us? We've talked about this over the summer uh, we've talked about images and stories that help us to know Jesus. And what are some of the images that we've talked about this summer? Let's see. The yoke of Christ, the trainer of oxen. The good shepherd, and that's where we talked about Ruthie's rat, Slowbro. The sower of seeds, we've talked about that. We talked a lot about weeds. Um, what else? We talked about a lot of those things, but there was one that we didn't mention, and that's Jesus as victim. Whoa. Someone who feels pain and suffers. Have you been in a situation where you suffered or where you felt sad or felt pain? Maybe you've seen someone else, another child or even a grown-up, suffer or feel sad. Have you been on the playground with your friends and then it feels like all of a sudden they've decided that you're not one of their friends anymore, right? You guys were besties yesterday and now they won't even talk to you. Ouch. It feels like you've been shut out or rejected. Did you know that Jesus also went through that? He was also rejected and shut out and hurt by people who were his friends. So Jesus also feels pain and hurt just like you do. And so understands your pain and your hurt. That's a relationship. God understands your emotions. Jesus has empathy. 
And when you feel compassion for another who is hurting, then you are showing empathy. And that empathy, that feeling is a connection to Christ. You know Jesus when you feel that compassion and that empathy. So this week, when you are practicing your empathy and compassion, guess what? You've grown a little bit closer to Christ. And what you feel in that moment, that emotion, is a way to know Jesus. And we're going to be exploring empathy and compassion a little bit more in our upcoming playlist, which will be sent out separately. So keep your eyes peeled for that, and we'll see you back soon. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Jesus asks his disciples this seemingly simple question, to which they respond, John the Baptist, or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or maybe even one of the prophets. But then Jesus hits them with a deep question that gets to the heart of the matter. Who do you say that I am? Who am I to you in your day-to-day -day life? When people ask you, who do you worship? What do you say? When life is really hard, who do you say that I am? Peter responds, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living God. Who do we say that Jesus is? You know, this question gets to the heart of our beliefs in Jesus. Who is the one that we follow? And what difference does he make in our day-to-day -day life? This section in the Gospel of Matthew is often seen as the deep heart of the Gospel, the theology of who Jesus is and how we go about worshiping him. Peter says in his answer to Jesus' question, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. To which Jesus says, blessed are you. God has told you that. And Peter's reward for his answer is a new name. Going from Simon, son of John, to Cephas, Peter, the rock. And Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my church. But then Jesus goes on to explain what it actually means for Jesus to be the Messiah. And in Matthew 16, 21 through 23, Jesus explains it this way. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God, forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Again, from Matthew 16, 21 to 23. So Jesus says, If you want to be my followers, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. And this understanding is part of the deep core of who Jesus is and part of our faith to know who Jesus is. But knowing who Jesus is, is more than just a theological answer that we give so that we might pass a test. Knowing who Jesus is and how to relate to him is so important in our everyday life as we face the daily challenges of our life. Knowing who Jesus is and having an image to hold on to helps us in our day-to-day -day life, helps us to know the power of Christ in our lives. We spent the summer looking at what it meant and means to follow Jesus. Along the way, we looked at many stories that actually helped in this understanding and answer to that question, who is Jesus? And how can Jesus help in what I am facing today? These stories and images that we looked at were concrete images 
that we can use in moments when life gets tough. I had preached on Jesus being our trainer and calling us to wear his yoke and reminding us that his burden was easy and his yoke was light. Well, one day that week after having preached that, I was pretty overwhelmed by life in general. And as I prayed, it occurred to me to practice what I had just preached. So I imagined putting on the yoke of Jesus and then listening to what Jesus, my trainer, was telling me to do next. And you know what? It helped. Using that visual image of Jesus's yoke helped remind me that I was not in this craziness alone. Many of those stories and images that we looked at this summer have that in common. They help us understand who Jesus is and then give us a visual image to help us as we face our day-to-day -day life. And what they do is they allow Jesus to not just be a savior up there somewhere who saves me from my sins, but then doesn't have much for me to handle what I'm facing today. These stories and images make who Jesus is make a difference in how we approach each day, especially how we approach the challenges, opportunities, and struggles of each day. And knowing these things about Jesus helps us to truly take up our cross and follow him into the first days of school, into yet another Zoom meeting, the isolation of this pandemic, the craziness of an election, etc. We're going to look back this morning to three of those images that we used this summer to help us answer who Jesus is and how he can help me in this coming week. So who is Jesus? According to John chapter 10, Jesus is the good shepherd who knows our name and who offers us abundant life. Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. So in our day-to-day -day life, Jesus knows our voice, knows who we are, and therefore knows what it is we are going through. And so even as we struggle, Jesus, the good shepherd, gives us life, which allows us to get through the day. There's so much of our world and daily living that drains us of life, of energy, of joy. And Jesus reminds us that through him, we have abundant life. We have joy, no matter our circumstances. So how to get more out of this understanding of Jesus? Keep listening to and for Jesus's voice. Read scripture, pray, and actively listen for Jesus's voice. Because the more we pay attention to the voice of Jesus and learn what it sounds like, the more clear Jesus's voice becomes. And the easier it is to distinguish Jesus's voice from other voices. So Jesus is the good shepherd who gives us abundant life. So who is Jesus? According to Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, Jesus is the trainer of his disciples and the provider of the yoke. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew eleven twenty twenty nine. So like the one who trains oxen, Jesus is our trainer. He provides the yoke that we need, provides the instruction on how to use the yoke, and then gives us step-by-step -step instructions on what we need to do on any given day. Jesus reminds us that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And when we follow his teaching and his leading, life is easier. We do not have to figure out what to do. We just have to follow Jesus, our trainer. And in the current world we are living in, this understanding of who Jesus is allows us to not fret about how to deal with all that comes our way. As we fret over parenting in a pandemic and online schooling, how to address racism, the economy, struggles of the pandemic, and even the unknown of this time, 
and the upcoming election. We did not have to know the answers of how to deal with them. Jesus, as our trainer, will tell us what we need to do next. So how to get the most out of this part of Jesus? Actually putting on the yoke. We are a stubborn people. We are a I can do this myself kind of people. We are a not I don't need to bother Jesus with my problems kind of people. But too often we try to get through life trying to figure things out on our own, using our own strength, our own wisdom. And often all it gets us is heartache and exhaustion. Jesus says there is another way. Wear my yoke. Let me teach and lead you. So every morning, imagine putting on your Jesus yoke and then listening for the first instruction. So Jesus is our trainer and our yoke provider. So who is Jesus? According to Matthew 13, Jesus is the sower of seeds. We looked at two parables from Matthew 13 that remind us that Jesus is the sower of the seed. They start with, a sower went out to sow. And Jesus sows the seeds of the fruit of the Spirit, of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And of these seeds that Jesus sows, there is an abundance of them. And in the work of the Spirit, seeds often sprout in places we would never expect them. And Jesus then gives us a lot of seeds and calls us to spread those seeds of love and joy and kindness and gentleness. But we also encounter the seeds of the evil that comes out in those weeds in our lives. It's explained in the parable of the weeds. And Jesus, as the sower of the seeds, tells us to let those weeds be, but then also work to plant seeds that will crowd out those weeds. And so when we are unsure of what we can do to make a difference in this world, this part of Jesus tells us to just keep spreading those seeds and to let the Spirit worry about how they will grow. So how do we get the most out of this understanding of Jesus? When you start your day, ask Jesus to help you see what seeds are going to be needed to be planted today. And then actively seek where Jesus is giving you the opportunities to sow those seeds. Love, forgiveness, justice, mercy, kindness, patience, peace. Jesus as the sower and provider of seeds. So who is Jesus? Well, according to today's scripture, Jesus is also the Messiah, the son of the living God. And this part of Jesus reminds us that Jesus is not just a nice guy who helps us through our day, but Jesus is God, the Messiah, the anointed, our savior and the giver of life now and forever. So who is Jesus? The one who lived and taught and then was arrested and crucified for us. His love was front and center on the cross. And then on the third day, Jesus showed forth the power of life that overcomes sin and evil and death. So when we face all of the parts of our day, from the mundane to the stress-filled, to the blessings and struggles, to the one thing after another, Jesus is the Lord of us all and gives us the power we need to face it all. So how do we get more out of this part of who Jesus is? Find a symbol that reminds you of Jesus as Messiah, our Lord and Savior. It could be a cross, a butterfly, a picture of an empty tomb, whatever helps you understand that. And then wear that symbol or put it in a prominent space where you will see it. And then when you look at that symbol, give Jesus thanks for being God, for being our Lord and Savior. So Jesus is Messiah, son of the living God. So Jesus asks us, who do you say that I am? Who am I to you? How does your loving and following me 
make a difference in your day-to-day -day life. Because that is the true point of believing in Jesus. Simply saying you believe in Jesus does not do much if believing and following Jesus does not make a difference in how we live out our day. Jesus offers us such a gift of knowing that we are not alone, that we do not face any part of our day, but especially the tough parts of our lives alone. And Jesus offers us the grace and love of God given to us every day to help us live that abundant life today. So who do you say that I am? Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are a Lord who walks beside your people. So we pray for people who walk for justice. You are a Lord who raises up those who are bent low. So we pray for those held down by the grindings of life and the indifference of the world. You are a Lord who feeds the hungry. So we pray for all who long for bread and the means to provide it. You are a Lord who celebrates the small and the insignificant. So we pray for the children and for those who are never noticed. You are a Lord who says, follow me. And so we pray for courage and faith in our hearts that we may take up the cross and find it leads to life. You are a Lord who offers healing. So we pray for those who are in need of your healing presence and those that we name now in the quiets of our hearts. You are a Lord who rose from the dead and provide for us all life abundant. So we pray for those who are dying and for those whose loved ones have died. And you are a Lord who loves us all and promises that we never walk alone. So we give you thanks, O oh God, for who you are. And it is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Please join me in the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As an act of worship, we return to God what God has graciously given to us. May our offerings be holy and acceptable to God. And the ways to give are listed there on the screen. The ways to mail in the offering to the church and giving electronically through our website. And let us now pray over the gifts that will be given. A loving and ever-present God, receive our tithes and offerings and our worship and our lives to your service. May they be used for all people and may they be given to show how much you love us. In your name we pray. Amen. So we are able to go out into the world knowing that our hope is indeed built on Jesus. So let's sing our closing hymn, My Hope is Built. Christ's soul, a rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking 
sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So Jesus stands and asks, who do you say I am? And we join millions who have gone before and say the Messiah. Jesus stands in front of us and tells us the realities of discipleship. So we join the millions who have gone before in the challenges of living as disciples. And Jesus stands before us and offers food and drink for the journey. Fed and nourished, we go out into the world to live and serve. Jesus stands before us, shining in glory, and, be, and will be with us to the end of the age. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you all, and also with you. I invite you to join us next week. During worship, we will look at Jesus' call to find rest. And then following the recorded worship service, we will have communion live through Zoom. So in this week, we invite you to find grape juice or wine and bread for our time of communion. Following worship this morning, join us for a Zoom worship time of fellowship. We've been doing this for a couple weeks now and it's been a great place to connect and to offer up our individual prayers. If you have not joined us yet, we would love for you to join us in that space. The link was in the email with these worship instructions as well as on the screen. Also know that you can comment about the service on our Facebook group, Whitney United Methodist Church group. You can join the conversation anytime. And remember that there are many ways to connect with us even as we are physically distancing including our radio program, Reach Out and Trust, which is broadcast on KBXL 94.1 FM on Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. And may God be with us until we meet again.